please welcome to the stage Raj Dada, Global Vice President for Software and AI Partnerships at IBM. Hello, good afternoon. So my name is Raj Dada. I'm responsible for all of IBM software and AI partnerships globally. And I have to admit, I feel like I have the best job in the world. I get an opportunity every single day to work with innovative companies such as yourselves and help them expedite their AI adoption with IBM's technologies and resources. And today what I want to go through is really, I, I want to speak to you about some of the trends that we're seeing in the industry, where we're seeing AI needs happening, and also how each of you could really help accelerate AI adoption for enterprises. So how many, just out of a show of hands, out of the, the founders, CEOs, and folks in the startups, how many of you actually have a AI strategy set for this year and for next year? Couple folks? All right, this might be the right crowd then for us. These are some interesting quotes that I wanted to share that came from some larger enterprise companies. What we're seeing today is the adoption of AI is being required across the board, regardless of small or large enterprises, but it's also going across various industries. So as we take a look at this, within these industries, they're also starting to collaborate with each other. They're looking at each other for help and how do they expedite their AI journey together. And this is a trend that we're seeing over and over again, because before there wasn't that much collaboration throughout industries, and we're seeing that happen more. Now, why is this so important to think about adopting sooner than later? One of the key industry trends that we've seen is you have the ability to accelerate your revenue 74% faster than your competitors. Now imagine that. I know obviously being at IBM, our revenue is fairly large, but if you look at that and having 74% incremental revenue growth in that space really changes the game for companies. And that's why the race for AI has become so, so critical for every single software company that's out there. Now, everyone's figuring out how do we get started with AI. As we know, this is a totally new area, a new way to innovate. We saw the cloud adoption happen years ago, and we saw how fast and how quickly that changed the market. We are seeing AI adoption happen way faster than the cloud trend we saw in years past. And why is that? It's forcing each of us to re-innovate the way that we haven't done before. Because now we're ha we have a set of technologies that can completely change the world and change the game on a daily basis. As we look at different industry trends, there's some key areas that I, I wanted to share with everyone here because as you look at, this is across the board, where enterprises are struggling, especially when they don't include AI into their day-to-day -day operations, we see a huge deficit occur. One of the stats and areas that we've seen is the customer service space. If you look at the stat over here, 91% of customers that are dissatisfied with a brand will leave it. That's not pretty good for our retention rates. That's an area I've seen a lot of investment from software companies, software innovators to come and help areas that expedite that place, right? The other areas we're seeing is the talent life cycle. We're seeing a lot of adoption of AI across the board. And why is this so critical? Because we can't scale to the space that the whole market is going without leveraging AI capabilities. This is why it's also very critical for every single one of the software companies that are out there to be adopting AI capabilities and not make that a secondary notion. So of those that have already adopted AI, this should resonate with you. I was with a fairly large software company yesterday, and as we were going through what has slowed them down, these were the key talk areas that were standing out to them. And this should resonate with everyone that's in this room. We all hear about the limited AI skill sets that are out there, and why don't we have more skills to adopt AI? We have a high price. Everyone's seen what's going on with GPUs that are out there. Ethical concerns continues to be a very large area and concern for companies because of the adoption and not having governance models. We've heard about how AI has spit out, biases has spit out incorrect information 
that's a huge concern for companies because if you're going to adopt AI and you're not putting in the right guardrails for it, you have to be very worried about what it's going to spit out. And this is an area that IBM continues to invest in with our, our, our customers and within our research teams. What happens when you end up adding AI into your enterprises, into your technologies? We've seen a massive productivity gain occur. And this is not just from us. This is what we're hearing from our clients, from customers every single day. So this is an interesting one that I, I wanted to highlight is as we adopt AI, we're seeing AI assistance explode. Now, why is there an explosion of AI assistance? AI assistants are exploding because it's helping with productivity, with our employee productivity. I'll share a personal story. I came back to IBM about a year ago. And one of the first areas that I noticed IBM was eating their own dog food was with regards to our HR practices. Basically, majority of our HR today is run via AI assistant. Imagine this. Imagine when you have to either promote an employee move their location, add salary, you go through an AI assistant to do so at IBM. You're no longer having to go into HR applications. You no longer have to do any of those things. We can also start doing that with our travel booking. We can start doing that with various areas that we never thought could happen. Initially, I was shocked. I, was, I looked at it and I said, you're going to ask me to transfer an employee via an AI assistant? What if they get transferred to the wrong place or what if they get exited out of the company? Believe it or not, this is something that majority of our employees use on a day-to-day -day basis and it's simplified it. Think about the simple mundane tasks HR partners had to deal with in the past. Same questions over and over. I need help doing this. I need help doing that. What are my benefits? How much extra time do I get off this year? This is all contained within our AI systems today. This has also led to some significant growth and productivity throughout the organization. So as we look at this, 70% of operating costs are being reduced with, via digital labor. This is a very key component, especially as we go into the economy of uncertainty. Where are we gonna go? Where is it heading? Costing is gonna be critical for us to be successful. And AI pay, plays a huge component into that. Customer experience is another critical one. I had talked about customer retention before. Imagine increasing your customer experience by 10X, making them happier with you, loving your brand even more. That's another critical area we're seeing across the market. And then obviously the IT operations area and app dev. If you could reduce that time by 80%, if you could go to market faster, what would that mean for your business? These are key trends that we're seeing. The other one I was going to touch on is what we're seeing in the market today is also 45% of our models that are out there are getting a lot more accurate. And what I mean by that is IBM spent a lot of time and effort with research to open up our models. We have the belief that not one company is going to just use one AI provider or one set of AI models. We opened it up. And why is that important? When you open it up to a broader community of developers and you have thousands and thousands of individuals contributing to an area, you change how much accuracy you can get within your models. The other one, by opening up our models, create, going from large language models to smaller models, small language models, we've seen our, our costing go down over 100%. We've been benchmarking this continuously. So, the industry started, as we know, with closed models. We were, it was excellent for writing poetry. It was great for kids doing their homework. But as we start going into the enterprise, as usage starts increasing, we need to make sure accuracy is there, number one. And then number two, we need to make sure the costs aren't going through the roof. That's what usually slows down AI adoption. And IBM has taken a serious stance with this when we opened up our Granite models earlier this year. I'm just going to touch on areas that we have reinvented the whole partner place for helping ISVs such as yourself grow and adopt AI at a very rapid pace. Here is that we take a look at multi-models. I just shared this with you. 
no company is going to go with just one set of models. There's multiple models out there, multiple open source models out there. You look at Hugging Face, you look at our Granite technology, it's all out there. And we're encouraging our clients and our software vendors to use it as much as possible. The data, everyone knows how disparate data is and how do we take all of this data, create the right foundation around it and build off of it. So you do have the right outputs that are required when it comes down to it. And the final aspect, which I think is one of the most important aspects, especially for software companies as they look to break into enterprises, is the governance aspect. I talked about this briefly. We need to put guardrails within our software components and technologies in order for us to be able to scale our business. Many enterprises are saying, if we don't know where this data is coming from, we don't know how your models will build, we don't want you inside of our company, plain and simple. This is where the governance aspect that we introduced earlier, uh, actually late last year, the Watson X governance solution actually provides those guardrails for us. We make sure that all of the AI technologies that's being created, that's being released is actually governed. So you don't have biases coming out. You don't have incorrect information being sent to different folks that are, imagine if you're a customer and you're leveraging someone else's AI technology and you're getting the wrong output. That's one of the worst things that could happen. And it will take away all type of relevance and confidence inside that technology. This is where I encourage every single software company you must take this as part of your guardrail in order to really scale your business, especially with an enterprise. Now, what have we done here at IBM to really change all of this? Last year, when I came on board, we looked to completely overhaul our partnership go-to-market strategies. We wanted to make sure we were able to collaborate with many companies, not just one or two. And we wanted to open up the ecosystem for that. We have an engineering team that's out there that can actually help our partners and other software companies implement our technologies. We go in this with you. We don't expect companies to be able to hire thousands of data scientists. We don't expect companies to have the deep AI knowledge and skill sets. As a software company, you already have your own niche. You already know which area and which solutions you want to take to market. Not everyone's supposed to become an AI software company. And therefore, with that belief at IBM, what we've done is we've actually helped and hired thousands of engineers globally to help each software company be able to invoke the, their AI capabilities into their technologies. And this is a very critical aspect for us as we look through this. We have use cases already pre-built and a lot of these use cases are becoming repeatable. What if you were able to take your solution set, take IBM's AI technology and rapidly take it to market? That's where we're seeing real innovation occur. That's also where we're seeing a lot of rapid, innovative growth. I would like to leave you with the idea of the AI marketplace is already here. It's moving so, so fast. I'm seeing companies being able to, the ones that are able to adopt are growing their revenue streams faster than we've ever seen before. But instead of all of a sudden jumping in and saying, we're able to go and adopt AI tomorrow, let's be very proactive on how you do it. Put the right guard, um, guardrails around that because that's what's going to be very critical as you expand your businesses. And the very last part is taking a look at cost. Everyone wants AI, but you don't want to pay the massive GPU costs once your business starts scaling with the AI technology. That's where I, I encourage everyone to start looking at what the open models are out there. Take a look at IBM's Grand I models. Take a look at the various open models across the board, not just IBM. Why are those so important? And how is that going to help you scale your business? Now, we have, we've actually a sponsor for the first time at Saster, and I would encourage everyone to go by and to check out our booth. We have additional details. We have demos going there, but we also have something a little bit more fun. So we have a speakeasy. So if you want, if this is getting too stressful for you and you're ready for that afternoon drink, the speakeasy is open right now. But we also have one of our partners and one of our solution providers actually in the speakeasy. So if you're a golf fan, we actually have a golf simulator from True Golf set up there. This simulator is running Watson X for its software, helping you predict where the ball is going to go. It's going to help you predict where you what improvements you need on your swing. I haven't been able to crack the code on it yet because I need improvement across the board in my golf game, 
But I do encourage you, if you have some time, to go check it out. See AI technology in the works at the Speakeasy and enjoy a drink on us. So that said, I really do appreciate everyone's time. I hope you found this valuable and I'm looking forward to meeting many of you.